Buenas tardes, eh, reanudamos el, el saludo, ahora en forma más formal, en forma, formal, en forma más eh, oficial, estamos recibiendo hoy por segunda vez al profesor Stanley en nuestro centro, que es el Centro de Estudios de Hermenéutica de la Universidad de San Martín, aquí en Buenos Aires. Estamos eh, muy gustosas y muy gustosos de poder dar continuidad a esto que se titula el ciclo, podemos decir ya, de filosofía africana. El año pasado tuvimos la, eh, la alegría y la, el desafío de, de comprender todo aquello que el profesor Stanley nos presentó sobre Gadamer en la filosofía africana. Hoy vamos entonces a darle la palabra al, al doctor Stanley. Marina Mayor lo va a presentar. Eh, Marina es quien tuvo el contacto casi, digamos, cotidiano con el profesor Stanley para poder llegar a estar en este momento tan, tan eh, fructífero para todos y todas las que están en este momento aquí. Marina, te paso la palabra y una vez más, muchas gracias. Doctora Dina Frenz Chineru, por acompañarnos en esta eh, reunión, en esta primera reunión de este año, segunda de este ciclo de pensamiento y filosofía africana. Sí, Marina, te paso la palabra Gracias. entonces. Thank you, Laura. Uh, gracias, Laura. Um, well, eh, Uche. On behalf of the Center of Hermeneutic Studies, Dr. Carlos Ruta and all uh, his team, Laura, Diego, and myself, we would like to publicly express our gratitude for having the generosity of sharing uh, your work with us. I'm sorry, my voice is kind of hoarse. Uh, we trust that we can pursue this and create a bond of scholars from different uh, institutions and dig, dig into the African philosophy, right? Well, I will briefly introduce you to the people in the room, although everybody knows you already, but I will read your bio. Professor Stanley Uchi Anozzi teaches philosophy, the person and social responsibility at Boston College, Jesuit University, Massachusetts, USA. He's a Boston College Pulse program faculty member. He taught philosophy and ethics at the University of Indianapolis, Indiana, USA. He taught indigenous religions in global contexts at Carleton University, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. He's also a visiting professor of hermeneutics, race and social responsibility, CAPES program for visiting scholars fellowship at the Department of Preventive Medicine of the Faculty of Medicine of the University of Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Anotzi is a co-director of Alternative Perspectives and Global Concerns, an Ottawa-based scholarly organization, a consultative status organization with UN, ECOSOC, UN Committee of the States on NGOs, UNESCO. Okay, he was a contributor to the book Canada and Challenges of International Development and Globalization, which was nominated and finalist of, uh, to Canada, uh, sorry, uh, for 2019 Prose Award by Association of American Publishers Professionally and Scholarly Publishing Division. Well, thank, without further ado, uh, the floor is all yours, uh, Uche. Thank right. you. Gracias. Mm. Buenos días. It's my pleasure to be back with you again this time. I invited uh, uh, one of my friends, uh, Mr. Prince Chinedu Adima, to be a participant in today's uh, reflections on African humanistic philosophy as well as metaphysics. And I will likely use indigenous names such a way that I hope at some point his name will, will resonate with some of the ideas we're trying to establish. And whenever possible, I could invite him to say one or two things as kind of 
uh, a kind of a model where people learn from experiential encounter of situations of life. So by the way, the name Chi Ne Du will be in line with this hermeneutics of hope. God leads me, God guides me. You know, having said that, I would like to display the PowerPoint that I have for today's consideration. Just give me a moment. Le consulto, profesora Nozzi, porque eh, sale porque eh, Adina Prince Kinedu tiene su mano levantada. No sé si quiere eh, comentarnos algo, decir algo antes de que empiece la, la presentación. All right, he, he's going to remove that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. All right, thank you everyone. Today, our focus will be on the hermeneutics of hope in African Igbo ontology or metaphysics. My intention in this project is to advance or promote what is existent within the African philosophical world. Unfortunately, this is not a dominant narrative. It has not been given the opportunity that it deserves in terms of within the context of the academia. Just give me a moment. So I would like to push, advance, promote it, uh, what you may call bring a sense of critical consciousness to narratives about African philosophy and precisely the humanities of hope. Another thing that I would like to pay attention to or tribute to is uh, my philosophy, my professor who taught me African philosophy many years ago, Professor Pantelion Irebu. I do think his contributions are the kind of uh, a heritage, a patrimony that younger scholars within African philosophy can advance on and promote. And that is my goal. I would like to just uh, stop sharing for a moment and return back. Just give me a moment. All right. Just give me a moment. Let me modify something. Can you see it? Sí. All right. Ahora sí, yo le iba a proponer justamente poner pantalla completa. Gracias. Muy amable. All right. Good. Thank you. So what I'm trying to get done here, I'll have to make a distinction to important concepts. Ije and Ije. You know, the second one has got hyphens to nation marks to indicate that will mean light. Then the first one is being, in my interpretation of it, or what you may consider to be essence. Now, according to the philosophy of Pantaleon, he used what he called the Kpim, K-P-I-M, to emphasize this point about being. You can't talk about hope within African philosophy if one is not able to talk about being, because it's only being that gives hope. What truly exists gives hope. What doesn't exist does not give hope. You can't have hope on what is not capable of sustaining or providing life, as the case may be. Now, Ihe means a reality, that which is most real. In Latin, you could look at that from the perspective of substantia. In Greek, you are looking at something like usia. Then in Igbo, you call pem. In my own translation of it, I'll call it ihe. It is 
Ihen that makes everything that you can imagine possible. And now this brings me to this idea of Madu. Madu is an evil concept for person, not individual, person, the human person. And the human person means literally put together Ma'undo, the beauty of life, the beauty of reality, the beauty of existence. In my philosophical journey, which is essentially humanitical by nature, it's all about interpretation. It's all about communication of meaning. It is also about, especially from Gadamer's perspective, diffusion of horizons. So permit me to borrow some relevant ideas from European philosophical thought or Western philosophical thought in order to advance the essence of African philosophy in relation to hope. So when you think about model, the concept that comes very close to it within the German word or German philosophy will be da sein, the being that stands out, the being that reveals itself, the being that discloses itself. Uh, in Igbo philosophy, people talk about it this way, uh, whatever is good is, is never hidden. You can't hide the good. In other words, what is good will always disclose itself. What is good will always reveal itself. Perhaps this is why when people do something bad, they try to hide because in other words, it's the bad. The bad hides, the bad needs to be hidden. Quote unquote, the ugly needs to be hidden. But that which is beautiful will always speak for itself. And so that is at the core of what Igbo philosophy means by Mado, the beauty of life. I've always related this to ideas of Shakespeare. Uh, it's very interesting when he talks about the human being, uh, the, the paragon of beauty, you know, the, the essence of life, the paragon in terms of the best in relation to all of animals, the paragon of the world, the beauty of the world. And I do think that is in line with African Igbo philosophy of the person in terms of understanding reality. Now, the other point that I would like to emphasize here is the concept of Mado Ibe, Mado Ibe. You see, th there's a kind of an interplay going on there what you may call twofold nature or twofold attitude, especially in the philosophy of someone like uh, Martin Buber, a Jewish uh, philosopher. But the thing that I would like to borrow there just to expand on it is you can be an individual. You don't exist as an individual in African philosophy. You exist as a person, a relational being. The existence that we have is what you may call the I, we, I am because we are, and because we are, therefore I am. So the beautiful person, Madu, has to relate in an existence of beauty and interpersonal relationship in which we encounter one another. And this encountering, you may reflect that to be meeting, speaking, listening, dialoguing. And in that exercise of listening, speaking, and dialoguing, that is an exercise of hope. That is the exercise of the beauty of our existence, how wonderful it is to come together. That dialogue is expressible as care. That dialogue is expressible as concern. That dialogue is expressible as collaboration. So our mutual existence, our twofold existence is about sustainability, sustaining this existential world in which we live in togetherness with one another. I think the German word that comes to mind here, mit einander, mit einander, or some, some concept like mit sein, being with the other. I also look at it from uh, the Swahili concept of tukupamojo, being able to Tukupamoja, being able to, we are in this together. That is essential nature of who we are. And what am I getting at is this, the humanities of hope that is reflected in the concept of the human person. Now just move this forward. 
Now, for the purpose of this discourse and to give it a pointed direction, uh, there are three concepts that I'll be dealing with, or what you may call generative themes, because these are very important in order to understand the dynamics of the hermeneutics of hope within the context of African metaphysics or ontology. The first concept that I will look at is hope as ihe. Remember the I-H-E with the tonation marks on top, it's about light, disclosure, revealment, display, revelation. And it also means being. And remember, only I-H-E, not the one with tonation marks on top, that is only the thing that is reality. Then the reality should, ought to have, must have the I-H-E indicating the reality has to reveal itself. And that revelation is the revealment of hope. So light as hope is also light of hope. You know, in English language, we come very close to this concept. It says, a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, when you are having interactions with people and people think the situation is ugly or not so sure what's going to happen. And then you are like, yes, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, which means there is hope. That is very close to this concept of hope as ihen. And remember again, this hope, which is light, is also reality, is also substance, or what you may call in, in Greek, is what is at the foundation of everything that there is. In, in every existence, there is hope. In every existence, there is light. There is no despair. So the despair is more about like existential response to the truth of existence, existential response to the truth of existence, or existential response to the uncertainties of human existence. But by the nature of thin itself, whatever it is that is created, that has its source from, so to say, the first God, first source, or what you may call chi neke, God, the creator, the, that has hope as part of its constitutive being or constitutive nature. This is what I consider to be ontological hope ontological hope. You could also call it metaphysical hope if that's going to make sense, but I prefer to call it ontological hope because it is part of ihe as it is or the bim as it is from the beginning of time. Now, the next concept as a generative theme that I would like us to pay attention to is hope as nkuzi, n-k-u-z-i, hope as Nkuzi, uh, during my introductory remarks, I made a reference to my professor when I was uh, a young student of philosophy. He used the concept by way of Nkuziology, but I'm trying to direct or redirect our conversation away from Nkuziology because I do think that uh, it's kind of anglicized Igbo concept, which is not really beneficial but it is relevant if you use it from the communicative perspective. But I'm trying to sustain the purity of African philosophy as much as possible, such a way that uh, we don't really have to depend on Western philosophical narrative in order to really understand the African philosophy. In other words, I'm able to suggest that African philosophy can stand on its own. But then when we are communicating it in terms of linguistic exercise, we could borrow things here and there in order to, as a kind of means, as a kind of tool to communicate the essence. But the essence of African philosophy is intact. Now, he used nkuziology to reflect this idea of life as teaching, or what I may call social learning, or what I prefer to call the experience of life forms humanity. You know, like the example that I also gave during the introductory commentary, where I introduced the friend, uh, uh, Mr. Chinedu Adema Prince. Uh, this is a process of nkuziology where the student 
is learning from the teacher. The student is learning from the teacher. And what am I dealing with here? You may call it epistemological or pedagogical hope. The learning process, life itself is a teacher, so to say. Life is an exercise. You, another concept that may come to mind is the Greek word techne. Through life, we gain the skills of understanding. We gain the skills of deliberation. And, and, and I will also put it this way. Uh, when things happen to us within the context of African world, uh, the, the Igbos will say, Abo otu wano. Usually the Ungwa people of uh, Igbo land will say that, Abo otu wano, or they will say, Abo otu wade, meaning that is how reality is. That is how things are. That is how the world is. Or you may say it this way, such is the world. All you have to be is to be a patient person in order to allow the world to reveal itself through this pedagogical process. According to Pantelion I e. will borrow his uh, narrative in order to express my point. He uses nkuzi to mean to knock a right, to knock a right. You know, it's like when you talk about goldsmith or ironsmith, they, when they put the uh, material into intense fire, then they're able to hammer on it to give it the shape that they desire, the shape that gives them purpose, the shape that will work, the shape that will bring value, functionality, work, functionality, add value, improve upon human life. All these concepts are concepts that resonate with the idea of hope, how to live right, how to live well, how to acquire the skills of authentic existence in this world. Now, the other concept in relation to Nkuzi, or hope as Nkuzi, is that it's about education. The German word that comes to mind here in relation just to connect with what Nkuzi is building, which is cultivation, to become cultured. Sometimes some people use that to be civilized, but I'm not going to use it because it has got civilization of the other goes with colonization, which has got a negative undertone within the context of this discourse. But what I'm trying to borrow from there is a ability to build oneself up, to, to develop a sense of culture, learning process. Now, this learning process, even though we talk about it as nkuzi, to knock a right, it's not an act of violence. It's not an act of violence. It is an exercise that is full of mutuality. It is an exercise embedded or anchored in this idea of mado, beauty of life, mado ibe, that the other person is an essential part of you. So here, the mutual relationship between the teacher or the professor and the student, which is this relationship that we have described as inkuzi, is all about building up, given this hope, given this sense of prosperity, this the sense of being able to accomplish through life. So it is all about formation. It is all about reformation. It's all about development of the human person. Again, it's about formation, reformation and development of the human person according to the path of self-enlightenment, self-formation, and self-transformation, and maturity. Now, there is another thing that has to go with this uh, Nkuzi, a concept that kind of very close to it is this, the, the Greek concept, Paideia, Paideia. It, it gives you this idea of a young person, a young mind, or what in English language is to be malleable, something that can, uh, that can respond, something that pays attention, something that can learn, 
that has this patient in it. That is what Nkuzi will mean for the African person, for the Igbo person. And from my perspective, that goes with hope, being able to be patient with life and being able to learn the technique or the skills of the meanings of life. And that is part of the unfoldment, this disclosure that I associate with Mado Dazine, the being that reveals itself. As human beings reveal himself, herself, or themselves, so does the world reveal itself to us. And that revelation is the revelation of hope. Now, the other concept that I would like us to pay attention to as part of the generative theme is what I call the anthropological hope. So this one is hope as nchekube, hope as nchekube, or you may use the concept as olile anya. Sometimes we express this within the Igbo word as tomorrow has promises. Isn't that wonderful? Tomorrow has promises. Tomorrow is a day of hope, or it is a day to be hopeful. Again, I call this anthropological hope. The, the, the second one that I call hope as inkuzi is about the process itself, the act of teaching, the act of knocking a right, the act of crafting, the act of educating the young mind. That is the act itself. This one is on the person. That is why it becomes anthropological hope. The person lives it in actuality. What am I trying to get there? I would like to borrow the concept of what you may call dialectics. In the interactions of life, there is a, a form of dialectics. There is something going on that we are created, that we are part of being, and then we develop ourselves as part of this being. In other words, from the beginning, when there is the, the creation of a person by this chineke, ihe sinihe, gives every person, every being a purpose. Oh, uh, someone like Aristotle will call this, this idea of fulfillment, or he may look at this at to be fully human. Every thing has got a purpose to accomplish. Within the context of humanity, each person has to live a life of excellence, a life of full self-actualization. I think it was someone within the context of Irenaeus by name, uh, one of the Christian philosophers, I think he used this expression that I think resonates with the point I'm trying to make here, that a human being fully alive is the glory of God. I, I'm borrowing that to express this idea. When there is ihe sinihe chi neke, the light of light, the uncaused light that caused reality itself to come to be, that is the ontological hope, it gives a sense to anthropological hope which reflects in the life of each being. So in Igbo, we say this way, when a thing stands, then another thing stands by it. And so there are two things going on here. The first Ihe, the first thing, I-H-E, that exists by itself, for itself, is the first cause, according to Greek philosophy, that the Igbos will call chi neke, or Ihe sina, Ihe. Now that Ihe sina, Ihe is responsible, or is the formal cause of other beings, including human beings, anthropological hope. So every existent being in this sense, human being is expression of this light of light, is an embodiment of this light of light, is expression of this ontological hope, this source of all being. And so when you look at the African person, I will just give an example. If you're familiar with Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, mm -hmm. so you look at someone like Okonkwo, his life has to be in line with this ontological hope, expressing itself by way of this anthropological hope. His life has to express the purpose of the purposefulness of existence. 
Uh, uh, sometimes in Igbo we say, uh, there's a way we communicate this essence in line with, when you do whatever that you have to do, no one should blame you. O mene machie kwegi, they put it in Igbo, o mene machie kwegi, ndota atalea. If you live according to your purpose, then that is the nature of the hope that you, you have to display or to contribute in existence. One cannot go beyond his chi according to the Igbos. The chi, C-H-I, is in English language, you could equivalent it to be destiny. You could equivalent it to become fate. But what is it about is, it means that there is no chaos in existence. Existence is beauty. Existence is beautiful. And that's beautiful is the display of the disclosure of the beauty of life, which is essentially about hope. That is the point I'm trying to make with it. If we live according to our purpose and this self enfoldment then that is what is within the context of anthropological hope. Now, another thing with anthropological hope that I think I would like to emphasize here is uh, I will use this, uh, this concept of dialoguing. When you dialogue with people, you become much better a person. It's almost like rocks underneath the water or the sea or the ocean. Their interactions will turn them to become pebbles and they become smoothened out. They become beautiful. They become treasures. They become attractive, beautiful, resonating with this concept of hope, such a way that people can pick them up and play with them or take them home as a kind of a souvenir or memento, as the case may be. That is the, the very related to this anthropological hope where each human existence is a learning process of becoming the best version of your of yourself life in that sense become a teaching process life becomes not something to stress yourself about but being able to hang on with it and make use of it sometimes in english expression they will say if if life gives you a lemon then you make lemonade or if life gives you lemon you make lemonade you are able to transform the stumbling blocks of life into stepping stones because there is a purpose to your being and that being is excellence and it's also existential another way to look at this anthropological hope is from the perspective of someone like uh uh, Jim Paul Sartre, an existentialist philosopher. And I think his ideas are in line with Igbo African philosophy. You don't chicken out, you don't run away from life. Perhaps this is in line with suicide in African philosophy or Igbo philosophy. No matter how challenging life is, one is unable to take this life that they have considered to be sacred, which is the light, which is beautiful by themselves. One is unable to do that to themselves. So although there's a little bit of change or modification because from my perspective, because of the clash of civilizations or clash of culture, Western philosophy and non-Western philosophy, Western philosophy, and indigenous African philosophy. So sometimes this perception is whittled down. But if one were to go back to the basics of African humanistic philosophy or the humanistics of hope, uh, you could see the sensibilities that Africans had in relation to the sacredness of life and why not taking their, one should not take his own life. Now, I would like to relate that to what happened in the context of Okonkwo's case in the text by, uh, by Chino Achebe. Even though Okonkwo took his life, which is this idea of suicide, but it was in response to the sense of disappointment that he had among his people because they were not getting involved, so to say, in this revolution, in this fight against uh, external forces that was trying to take away their liberty, their culture, their sense of hope, or their sense of being. However, uh, the humanistic interpretation from my perspective for Reif is that here taking his life was the tragedy, not an individual or personal tragedy, but the tragedy of the community that kind of planted the seed of hope, the seed that if a man or a person or a personality or a personage like 
like Okunkwo should take his own life. He is only suggesting the need to reinvigorate oneself, the need to reformulate oneself, to rebuild oneself, and to chart a path for oneself in terms of the narrative of hope, uh, building a better future. And I could also say that the, the suicide by Okunkwo, which became the tragedy, communal tragedy, is from a dialectical perspective, the foundation for this insistent on developing African philosophy, or maybe from my own personal perspective, this commitment to advance African philosophy, knowing that uh, you know, this idea of things fall apart is simply about this clash of civilization, this clash of civilization between Western philosophy or Western culture or European culture and African culture or African philosophy, where the African philosophy was considered to be African culture as a dying narrative. And so there is this conventional commitment to say, no, the culture of my people should not die, that it is a sense of beingness of this people, a way of life of this people that must be put into display. Now, the other point that I would like to uh, relate to this conversation is that hope and cheat now, I use this chi when I mentioned or described concept like chi ne do, my, the God that leads. So that chi, C-H-I, especially with the capital C, is about the creative force, the uncast cause or the uncast of freedom. That chi is related with God, uh, like in the in the book of Genesis, in terms of Hebrew narrative or Hebrew scripture, as well as Christian Bible, is the cause of all things. The Ebus, without necessarily using the Christian concept of it, independently refer this chi as chi neke ihe si na ihe. Now that narrative is essentially the ontological, and, and that is why I call it ontological because you are not dealing with reality merely from the human perspective. You are looking at reality itself, reality itself for itself and by itself. And this reality is essentially God. And I think it's in line with some, um, uh, this Portuguese philosopher, Jewish Portuguese philosopher by, by name Baruch Spinoza. He talks about Deus sive natura, God or nature, nature or God. That is the same thing going on here. She naked is reality, is equivalent to God, but is also the totality of being. And it is from this being, you may consider to be necessary being, that contingent beings and other hierarchies of beings emanated, especially within the context of African people world. Now, I'd like to relate this uh, chi to names, but before I go on with that, I would like to uh, display as much as possible the connection between chi, capital C, and then the small letter chi, the C, the small C-H-I. The correlation there is this capital C is about the ontological being, it's about God himself, itself, by itself, the uncast cause, hope itself, reality itself. Now the small, small letter C is, so to say, the imago Dei, the image of God in every person. It is the generative force that is in every person. Another way to look at it within the context of Igbo philosophy is this, uh, is this, uh, th this source of guidance that we have, the source that protects a kind of a moral model that we have. And this moral model kind of inspires you. In some cultures, they will look at it as kind of your conscience. In whatever that you do, you have to live according to your conscience. You have to live according to your purpose. You have to live according to your destiny. You have to live according to that form that is present in your life. I do think someone like Aristotle or generally within the context of ancient Greek philosophy, they encapsulated this narrative about chi, the small letter chi in that is, uh, that is present in African philosophy. Uh, according to Aristotle, he uses the concept of form and matter, what he calls the principle of hulemorphism, what you translate hule matter, morphism being the form. So the 
The form here is the chi, the small letter C H I. And so that is, so to say, the, the divinity in every, per, every person, every human being. So the understanding of African humanistic philosophy about the person is that every person is a display, a revealment, a disclosure of the light of light. It's a disclosure or revealment of beauty itself, a disclosure or revealment of the sense of order, a disclosure or revealment of the one, which is also being. And so now let's bring it together in terms of the different names that uh, uh, Igbos use in terms of naming their family members, their children. And from a humanistical perspective, these names would display or disclose the sense of hope, the sense of this uh, philosophy of hopefulness, this philosophy of, of optimism, and this philosophy that promotes that each person has got a narrative, a story that has to motivate you or inspire you to allow this existential learning process to take, to take place in one's life and around one. I would like to use familiar names uh, because uh, creating new ones may make it complicated. Let's use the name of Chinua Achebe, the writer of Things Fall Apart, that I'm sure many of us are very familiar with having read his work. The full meaning of that name is Chi Nolomogo. Chi Nolomogo. The English transliteration will be, my God fights my cause. In other words, there's always this idea of the essence, substantia. Ihe, reality is displayed in who we are is displayed in our existential interaction with one another in an existential interaction with the world. There is no, so to say, purposeless being. There is no being or human person within the African Igbo world that doesn't have what the person is here for. And so to have something for is like to have a sense of destination. To have a sense of destination is to have a purpose. To have that purpose is to have a drive, something that really motivates you, a destination for your fullness of actualization as well as the actualization of reality itself. Now, another name that is very close to the one that we mentioned, Chino Achebe, is the family name called Achebe. Uh, there are many versions, but I have this one. Ani Chebe, may the God of the land guide me, protect me, lead us. Ani Chebe. And isn't that interesting? The Ani there is also about Chi. When I was making reference to the philosophy contributions by Baruch Spinoza, Deus Siva Natura, God or nature. Nature here, which is equated to God, is the Ani. In Igbo, people say that. Different dialects will call that Allah, the land. The land is part of reality. The land is reality itself, depend on the context of the language. The land is God and God dwells on the land and God leads and God protects. And that resonates with this existence about hope. We are always on the land. And I do think uh, by way of, just generative discussions that the idea of colonization in which indigenous people lost the land or Africans lost the land was also about losing hope, the source of their hope or sustainability, where they, they had a sense of presence. It's like the land is about the space of existence, the space of ontological fulfillment, the space in which you actualize yourself. It's not necessarily the land anymore from the material soil earth narrative, but what I will use this idea of locus or location where you are attached to us, where you truly belong, or what you may call being native, where you are coming from, where you are born, that is close to your soul. And that idea of land could also be related to idea of language. When you speak your land 
spoken words, then it relates to this display or disclosure of actuality, a life of existence, a life of joy, a life of fulfillment. When you eat food from the land, you are interacting, so to say, with nature itself, with where you come from. And, and maybe this is why sometimes we talk about fatherland, motherland. That nativity is what I'm trying to take from there to connect with the concept of God that has to protect, that gives hope to every human person within the African Igbo world. Now, another person that I would like to use her name is another well-known African author by name Chima Amanda Ngozie Adichie. She wrote a number of works like Purple Hibiscus, Things Around Your Neck, Americana. Uh, she wrote, I think, a, a material that uh, Beyonce we use in, in singing a lot of her songs in relation to promoting feminist narratives. Uh, we all should be feminist. What I want to borrow from her name is this idea, Chim Amanda. You know, very often a lot of people anglicize that, uh, this, and they call her Amanda, or they call people with such a name Amanda. But the fullness of the meaning resonates with what I'm trying to display here in African Humanetics of Hope. Chim Amanda, my God will never fail. The emphasis is on the chi, C-H-I. And then there is this personalized version of it. The M, very close to it, is very significant. Chim am, an, Amanda, my God, the capital C, my first cause, reality itself can never fail, cannot disappoint. Reality itself is the source of my beingness is the source of my existence. And so there is a sense of hope right there just by the name itself. Uh, this is a joke, but I'm trying to make a point. I think one of the songs by Michael Jackson uh, before he passed away, he says, just call my name, I'll be there. When you call my name, my name reflects my sense of hope, my hopefulness. That's what I can, you know, uh, uh, relate to this idea of Chim Amanda, my God will never fail. Now there are other names. Again, the example that I give with Chi Neidu, my God guides me. That is an equivalent of Chim Amanda. That's another way to communicate that essence, that narrative. There are other names like Chi Zoba, my God protect me, lead me guide me. Some people talk about chi na echerim, my God, the divine, the, the necessary being, the uncaused cause, the uncaused freedom, hope itself will always think about me, will always be part of my narrative. And then as part of expression of this hope, people also name their kids or their children uh, with such names like Nkiruka, what lies in the future is better. What lies in the future is hopeful. Don't be disappointed. Don't give up. Don't quit. And then names like Nkechi, I will put it in my own little way, little tweak about it is Ogenkechi, the time of God, the time of display of the presence of God. Uh, something that I find in all this relatedness in terms of Igbo names and the Igbo communication of the humanities of hope is the, uh, the reality or the similarities or the closeness between uh, Igbo narratives and the uh, Hebrew narratives. You know, uh, the, the time of God's intervention in the history of the salvation of the, the Jewish people or the Hebrew people. You know, the idea of this uh, Kairos time. Some people talk about that as Kairos time the intervention of God, or what some people look at, this idea of kenosis, the emptying of the personage of Christ in order to show the way, which is this idea of a sense of hope. I am not trying to equate narratives about Hebrew and equate the narrative about Christianity to what is happening within the context of African Igbo philosophy, but I'm trying to display a sense of uh, similarity and closeness that, but, but at the same time emphasize that uh, African philosophy, Igbo philosophy or the humanities of hope can stand on its own by itself and for itself. 
Having said that, I would like to bring my discussion to a kind of uh, an end, which is by way of conclusion. There are things that I'm trying to get accomplished here, and I would like us to kind of uh, recall. The first concept that I'm trying to put out here is my usage of the concept of E-H-E to reflect reality, being, or essence. I am using this Ihe to replace what my professor Pantelion Ire would develop as the quim or the quiddity or the essence of being. I do think Ihe addresses that question. I'm also playing with this by way of giving this the IHE that has got this tonation marks emphasizing that Ihe being has to reveal itself. Being itself is light. Being has to disclose itself. And that is the co-relationship or the connection between Ihe as being and essence and then as light and disclosure. And so the connecting link between both concepts will be this idea of hope. Now, another point that I would like us to remember in this discourse is that the, the three generative themes that I try to develop, this ontological hope based on the essence itself of God or the first cause or hope itself or reality itself, as well as what I call this pedagogical hope, which is the in the act of teaching itself, life teaches us. That teaching process is a sign that there is something that lies ahead. There is a future. There is a purpose. There is a value. There is a thing of joy. There is beauty. And then the third is what I call, consider to be the anthropological, where this Nkuzi process, this knocking a right, is not a knocking a right that happens in the theoretical sense in abstraction. It is a knocking a right that happens in the life of a human person. And if it happens in the life of a human person, it means that each person, each one of every one of us, has got a purpose, a sense of fulfillment, a drive in order to live to the best versions of themselves. And so that is where you have hope as Nkuzi and where hope for Nkuzi will make sense. Now, as part of this conclusion, I'm trying to pro offer or provide solutions to what you may consider to be the ethics of human existence within the African world. If, if we have Ihe, that is which idea of hope, and Nkuzi that gives you idea of hope and this anthropological hope and all this epistemological hope, how then should the Igbo person live in order to have a life of fulfillment, in order to uh, what you may call self-actualization, to develop without finding himself, her, himself, herself or themselves within, so to say, like people talk about Africa within the context of the third world or the developing country or where there is or uncivility or people killing one another. What am I trying to get at? My point is the narrative or the discourse that we are undertaking is a narrative that calls African scholars, African students, or people within African scholarship to what I may consider to be the humanetics of the political philosophy of patriotism. Going back to oneself, knowing that you can find solution find a sense of hope from within one's cultural philosophy, cultural narrative, cultural language, whatever it is, that there is a sense of hope that we can find more to ourselves than outside. And I think I'll borrow the concept by John Henry Clark. He says that the crisis of the African person is the crisis of the distortion of the frame of mind of the African person, where the person is caught in the middle of Western culture and non-Western culture, whether to accept his own cultural values or their own cultural values, or to accept the dominant narrative projected by the Western world. So that sense of inner confusion, inner conflict, crisis, is what is at the heart of the crisis that the African person uh, sees or inability to actualize oneself in through activities. Uh, one scholar calls this the crisis as Uwayaga Rayaga, the, the world of confused value. That is what I'm trying to address by emphasizing on this humanity of hope from African uh, perspective 
and try to redirect African scholars to look within the cultural values, look into the metaphysics of their world, or look into their own philosophy or ontology in order to find the drive and to rehabilitate their philosophy as well as authentic existence from a homegrown perspective. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, profesor Stanley. Muchas gracias por la claridad y por volver a acercarnos estos, eh, este panorama de la hermenéutica de la esperanza africana. Eh, queremos entonces ahora abrir la, la ronda de preguntas, de comentarios. Quien quiera preguntar algo, como digo, comentar o repreguntar, no tienen más que abrir el micrófono o levantar la mano. Carolina, Carolina, ¿no? Sí, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes. Eh, voy a hablar en castellano porque hablo muy mal inglés, ¿puede ser? Sí, estamos con, el, con, el, sí. con la interpretación simultánea. Dale. Gracias. Bueno, primero que nada, muchas gracias, profesor. Eh, la verdad que es una temática totalmente desconocida para mí, así que le agradezco mucho. Muy claro. Eh, mi pregunta tiene que ver con algo que usted incorporó en las conclusiones, que no lo había desarrollado previamente, pero que lo incorpora ahí. Eh, al hablar de esta cuestión de la crisis de la persona africana de, por el conflicto, eh, de encontrarse como en una lucha entre dos culturas, digamos así. Yo le quería preguntar si eh, en esta metafísica o esta visión ontológica que usted nos está transmitiendo, hay también eh, algún estatuto ontológico justamente para pensar esta crisis. Lo que quiero preguntar es si hay, hay como alguna, eh, en esta metafísica de la esperanza, ¿hay alguna, algún tipo de función negativa o cómo se piensan las cuestiones que tienen que ver con el mal? Digamos, si hay algo que, que usted pudiera comentar en relación a eso. No sé si, si soy clara o mezclé muchos temas. All right. You, you said the concept of evil. Is that Caroline? Sí. Right. Sí, cómo se integra en esta metafísica right. de la esperanza. Digo, usted puso el caso de uno de los autores que terminó haciéndose daño a sí mismo, digamos, eh, cometiendo un suicidio. Bueno, porque eso es algo que pasa en la, en la experiencia right. de la vida humana. Right. Okay, thank you. I made reference to Pain Solar Power by Chinu Achebe and uh, the main hero there is considered to be Okunko. He had to kill himself. Killing himself, although this is not, is a fictional text, was a tragedy that some people interpreted that that was an individualized or personalized tragedy. But from my calculation or interpretation of it, and then reading all the sections of the text from a very humanistical perspective, That is the tragedy of the community. It wasn't merely the tragedy of Okunko, but it also planted the seed for this demand or desire for self-actualization, self-determination, self-control, self-lead, where the cultural survival of the indigenous people of the Igbos or the African in a very in a, in a general sense at this at this contest. So that, that is what is going on there. So uh, that evil, that suicide that happened was transformed from a dialectical perspective, was uh, like the seed has to die in order to give you the new, like I said, the corn. When you plant it, there's a kind of, a kind of going into the dark and then this re-emergence from the dark into this sense of hope, this sense of beauty, in order to give you a lot of carbs that you can eat from. That is what I think that transpired in the life of Okunko within the context uh, of this narrative about evil. Now, another thing that I would like to relate to this idea is 
If you are familiar with the transcendental concept by Thomas Aquinas, that is the same thing going on here. According to Thomas Aquinas, there are four uh, transcendental values. It calls that the first one is in Latin, it calls it bonum. Bonum means good. Then the second one is verum. Verum means truth. Then the third one is unum, that is the idea of unity. And then the, 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 the fourth one is beauty itself. What am I trying to say? It is the same thing that is beautiful or beauty. That is the same thing that is good. It is something that is good. That is the same thing that is one. In other words, it is one because it's not complicated. It's one because it's not confusing. One because it's not all over the place. And then that same thing that is one is also the truth. And remember, truth has to reveal itself as beautiful as well as good. I'm using that as an example to illustrate how the African Igbo people look at their world. The world is a good world from a good chi or reality itself. So the, 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 the good comes from the good. The good, the bad cannot come from the good, so to say. The bad cannot emerge from the good. Unless it is, so to say, like I described it as a, a stepping stone to a higher or not a, a, a stumbling block, but a stepping stone. In other words, when something is trying to unfold itself, you may interpret it as bad, but it's not really bad if you are patient. Uh, sometimes I use my educational process as part of it. Like it's like if you are a PhD student and you're working hard and sometimes you write your aces and the professor says, no, this is not good, go correct it. You go and correct it and that process knocks you aright then you become a better scholar in it. It's almost like learning a new language. Sometimes when you speak a language, I'm joking, if I were to speak Spanish, you know, some people are going to laugh, but then I'm like, okay, that's not the right way to pronounce it. And then I work on it. Maybe five years down the road, 10 years down the road, I become a better Spanish language speaker. People no longer see the days that I'm not good in speaking it. All they see is my excellence. And that is what I'm looking at here, that negative dimension of human existence, existential world that is transformed to the path of what is noble, what is beautiful, and what is the sense of hope. And so that is how the Igbo philosophy or Igbo existential world will address problems like Igbo. Mientras alguien más quizás hace alguna pregunta o comentario, eh, quisiera hacerle una consulta, eh, profesor, y es la siguiente. ¿Podríamos entender o, o decir que la hermenéutica de la esperanza africana eh, es una hermenéutica programática más que una hermenéutica de la facticidad? ¿En qué sentido? ¿En qué se ocupa de aquello que se ha de alcanzar o que se propone, es decir, en el sentido programático o romántico, y menos quizá del mundo, del mundo dado, del mundo en el que nos encontramos, de este mundo de la facticidad. Esa era mi primera pregunta. Y la segunda está relacionada con el segundo punto, cuando usted nos, nos enseñó que la hermenéutica de la esperanza tiene un aspecto, tiene uno de los conceptos que usted eh, desarrolló, un aspecto eh, epistemológico, pedagógico. Y ahí no pude dejar de pensar en las cartas de la educación estética de Schiller, donde se propone justamente una transformación del, él va a decir después, del ciudadano, o del, del sí, en realidad es del ciudadano, en, en virtud de la educación o de la formación que le permite volverse un ser libre, ¿no? Un ser humano libre. Mi pregunta es si en la hermenéutica de la esperanza africana, esa ese aspecto pedagógico o ese, quizás retomando lo de la primera pregunta, ese programa 
eh, pedagógico, tiene eh, hoy en día una, digamos, como una eh, injerencia o una influencia en la vida educativa eh, africana, sea eh, a cualquier nivel, ¿no? Sea a nivel inicial, primario, secundario, universitario, si tienen ahí como una vinculación con el sistema educativo eh, actual en, en África y bueno, o en algún eh, estado africano. All right, thank you for your question. I will go with the, the last question and then uh, return to the first. But if I forget anything, please uh, remind me. So the, the, the second question that you asked that I think is very interesting is this idea of uh, epistemological pedagogical hope. Yes, you are very right in terms of how Shelley looks at it, this idea of citizenship, or uh, what uh, Bozanket himself calls it, citizen mind, education of the mind, is education of the young mind. What I related in my own little way, humble little way, this idea of uh, political philosophy of patriotism, how to love your motherland, how to love your fatherland, how to love your culture. You know, yesterday I, I was involved in a, a, a conversation and just like uh, Zoom will put my name, uh, Stanley Anozi, I said, no, my name is Uche. You know, I always say that, by, you know, I joke, but I'm trying to, it's part of that self-consciousness. It's a part of this cultural revival. I'm tired of answering Stanley because Stanley doesn't, it pays my bills, but it doesn't pay my, so to say, patriotic bill, returning to where I come from, returning to my homeland to address my ethical well-being among people that look like me, live like me, laugh like me, and do things like me. And so that is the importance of this epistemological pedagogical hope. Uh, I also, in my own little way, I encourage people that work with me or work by me or assist me to allow indigenous Igbo philosophy to be part of the educational system. I think that is part of the crisis where Africans, in this particular case, Igbos, they, they, they learn things only in English language. If they were to learn sciences in Igbo language, I mean the principles of sciences, because these principles of sciences are universal, but unfortunately they are expressed in English language or probably in Francophone African countries in French, but if they were expressible in indigenous languages, uh, I do think that Africans or Igbos in this case will be better in their skills. You know, sometimes when I watch YouTube, a lot of the young people are involved in a lot of narratives and jokes and all that. Yeah, you can only, the joke can only satisfy you at the momentary level because they have not really addressed the fundamental issues. So these are uh, what I do think that education or pedagogical epistemological hope can bring, which is leading Africans, Igbos, to return to the basics of being proud of their culture, being proud of their civilization, and uh, making that part of the educational process that can develop authentic existential people, existential being in the world. And that can also help with understanding of ethics. I could relate this, I think I've mentioned this before, but I don't know if it was within this forum. Um, the role of Western Christianity in the distortion of the frame of mind of the African person. So the African person is always talking about Jesus of the Western narrative. But if you look at the narrative about Jesus, it's almost in line with the cultural values of the Igbo people before the promotion of Christianity to the highest level. So for example, Madu Ibe, Omonna, all these things are good things that people could live by without necessarily having to become Christians. So for example, a, guy, uh, a scholar by name Albert Nolan, I think I could display his work right here. 
uh, but Nolan, his work, he says, Jesus before Christianity. My argument in that consideration is that the African person doesn't have to promote Jesus in order to be a good person. These values are already present. Like when we say, ndo kako, ndo dere, we're already recognizing the presence of God and the values of God. And these are ethical values that we could apply in order to solve our problems without this move to convert. This move to convert is the move of this self-depreciation, not appreciating what we have. And very often you can't really solve the problems of life from outside. You have to solve it from within. When that which is within is unable, then you authentically employ the external in order to support it. But if you reject that which is indigenous, that is with this within, and then to employ that which is external, you can really solve a lot of these problems. Uh, the Igbos will say this. I know it may be hard, but it's always good to say it. Unko denamba neire mba nuri. Whatever the firewood that people cook with from their community is going to cook their meals. The educational process, if it is indigenous, the language reinforces the cultural values of the people, will really bring this sense of life of hope and address the crisis of the Igbo person or the crisis of the African person. Now to the first question that you asked, if I understood it, I think there is this distinction between theory and praxis or practice. So you are looking at factual and then you are looking at the given world. I, I, did, I, did I get that? The factual world, the existential world, and the problems of the existential world, and probably the imagined world. Uh, if I understood it, do, do you want to make a comment so I can move from there? Did I understand it? Sí, gracias por la, por la primera respuesta. Mm -hmm. Y eh, mi primera pregunta mm -hmm. apuntaba a la consulta de si la hermenéutica de la esperanza africana podemos entenderla como una hermenéutica programática y no como una hermenéutica de la facticidad. Right. Es decir, una hermenéutica que se ocupa de aquello right. que se ha de concretar o uh, de aquel eh, horizonte de sentidos right. que se concretará en el momento en el que esa, eh, eso, ese deseo se concrete, esa esperanza logre confirmar ese deseo, mientras que eh, hay hermenéuticas o conocemos hermenéuticas de la facticidad, que se ocupan del de, eh, análisis y el estudio del ser, en tanto ser eh, con, el ser en, la, okay. en una comunidad. Esa era eh, la pregunta. Ok, ok, I got, I got your point. Um... I think within the African philosophical world, you know, by the nature of hope, there is always the anticipatory dimension. Uh, I had this thought in my work here, uh, where I translated it to be uh, futuristic hope, but I try to, I don't emphasize the futuristic hope because hope by its nature has got the future in it, the sandwich in it. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, Future is part of hope, and hope gives you a sense of future that has not been actualized. And so that will become that which has to be realized, that which is anticipated. That is important. Now, the, the actual dealing with the facts, the existential circumstances of the present is also part of that, um, the humanities of hope. What I consider here is the metaphysics of hope. What is hope itself, even if there is nothing to actualize, assuming that it is true that there is nothing to actualize, what is this exercise? And that is what I mean by kind of this, uh, uh, this political philosophy or ethics of patriotism. Loving to care about yourself. Love yourself. Don't, you can't build anything by safe self-hate, and that is part of the, the diseases of colonialism. The Europeans that came to Africa, the Western philosophy, promoted values, and part of the values, unfortunately we call them values, the values of self-hate, self-rejection, 
And so here, this human gist of hope is trying to say, don't hate, don't reject yourself. Go down to the root to discover this metaphysics, the body of work, the body of scholarship of your people. And then use that to teach the younger generation or the present generation about how to move forward. So that I think uh, in Latin, they will say, you know, the, or in French, you could say the, the point of departure and then the future will be the point of arrival. Terminus ad quo and then terminus ad quam. I think that is what is going on here. And so, and that is the project that we are undertaking. The exercise itself is about developing the metaphysics of hope, advancing, promoting it. Uh, someone like Leopard Sedasengo had something similar. Unfortunately, he said it in French, which I think should be said rather in an indigenous African language. He used the concept of negritude. And then some people translated that to be black consciousness. By the way, uh, before I came to North America, I never considered myself as a black man or a black person. All I considered myself was an Igbo person, African person. So that is my problem or concern with negritude if it is translated to be black consciousness. It should be translated with, as about African cultural world, African spirit, this African, uh, the, this spirit or movement, this spiritual consciousness, this spiritual awareness of your beingness and the purposeness of your being, and then anticipating this narrative about where that beingness leads you, the future, the path, and that is the path of hope. That's what I think is going on there. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias. You're welcome. Sí, eh, estamos casi sobre la hora. Tenemos unos momentos más, unos minutos más. No sé si eh, Adima o Quería agregar algo que al principio tenía la mano en alto y no sé si, si es que querrá, querría agregar algo o alguien más del público, Julieta, Juan José, Jaime. Yeah, beside him, I could ask a question if he likes. Have you got a question? At least as someone speaking within the context of the African world, maybe you have something to clarify or to add. No, I don't have any question. Okay, no question. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Eh, vamos entonces. Ah, You're welcome. Well, uh, okay, we will rest in peace and thank you so much for your generosity. As we always said, it was very enlightening for us all. Uh, we hope to see you soon again in the, the fourth time because this is your third presentation of the center. So a fourth time and a fifth time uh, this year or next year, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. Muchas gracias. No, bueno, no. y quisiera compartir todavía un, un comentario más antes de despedirnos. Eh, estamos eh, estableciendo el contacto también con quienes en la Universidad de San Martín se dedican a las literaturas africanas. Estamos trabajando, vamos a tener un encuentro primero así de, de organización eh, con una, digamos, con la directora de este programa, así que eh, vamos a establecer este contacto como para enriquecer el abanico y, y poder establecer también un diálogo entre literatura y filosofía, que sea la latitud en la que sea, en todos los lares, eso es siempre... Eh, creemos muy <ríe> fructífero y no siempre muy fácil y queremos intentarlo en este caso eh, con las literaturas que lo enuncian en plural y la filosofía y la hermenéutica africana así que 
eh, lo vamos a estar también contactando y molestando por, el, por esta cuestión también, cuando esté un poco más avanzado y podamos decir algo más al respecto. Así que esa es una, una, una noticia que les queríamos dar. Estamos eh, trabajando en una forma interdisciplinaria para abrir un mundo en toda su riqueza, y abrir el mundo africano en todas esas eh, eh, capas que tiene, ¿no? En su producción literaria, artística, filosófica, social eh, y todas las demás que corresponden al, al ámbito de los seres humanos. Muchísimas gracias otra vez, muchas gracias eh, a todas y a todos y les deseamos un, un lindo lunes también, eh, primero de descanso quizá y de celebración y, y de... De, recor de recordar por qué se <ríe> celebramos el Día del Trabajo, eh, que ahí también estuvieron las mujeres tan implicadas en ese primero de mayo, en aquel momento. Muchas gracias y buen fin de semana. Gracias especiales a Bárbara y a Catalina también por la excelente interpretación que, que nos permitió compartir esta, esta reunión tan tan amenamente y sin ningún tipo de, de sobresaltos. Gracias. Bárbara, gracias Catalina.